Welcome to Simple Steps to Success. We're now in module number six, and today's module is entitled Creating Better Relationships. So I created this module because it's very difficult for us to be happy and successful if we don't have good relationships with others. In fact, our lives can be miserable and happy and lonely if we're not able to have good relationships. I've personally seen people with so much potential fail and struggle because they just don't know how to get along with other people. On the other hand, I've seen individuals with almost no qualifications succeed because they really understand how to create and nurture great relationships with others. So remember, these are my own thoughts and ideas. They do not reflect the thoughts or opinions of others. They're only ideas to help you. And again, for best results, please follow these modules in the correct order. So today's objective is basically on how you can build better relationships that can help and support you. And I believe that if you have healthy relationships, you will feel more appreciated and more respected. I think that you'll become much more easier to accomplish your goals. You'll feel less alone and more connected with other people. You'll also experience more love, trust, and deeper emotions with those that you care about. I wanted to share this quote with you. And this quote is by Robert J. Waldinger. He's a clinical professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. And in his quote, he says, the clearest message that we get from this 75 year study is this, good relationships keep us happier and healthier, period. So we can see that having good relationships is critical to be more fulfilled and happier in life. So how do we develop new healthy relationships with people that we've never met before? So the first thing that I would suggest is you want to think of attracting a relationship versus chasing a relationship. When you chase a relationship, the other person may respond, but they'll probably feel a sense of manipulation or they may even be obliged to respond to you. And it just doesn't feel good. It feels a bit contrived. On the other hand, when you have a great relationship with yourself, what can happen is you begin to actually attract people to your life. And this becomes a win-win and it's more authentic because the other person can feel this great energy that you have and they just want to be a part of your life. So this is again why it's important to have a good relationship with yourself first. And it's also important to know that it becomes very difficult to attract healthy relationships in your life if you actually don't love and admire yourself. Having a great relationship with yourself will also make you very, very happy on the inside and confident. And again, this is very, very attractive to other people. And again, you can also have really good boundaries when you have a good relationship with yourself. Okay, and this again will create a lot of respect and admiration from other people. So after having a good relationship with yourself, most of your problems, to be honest, will be solved. And the reason for this is because people will be able to somehow feel more compelled to be around someone who's happy and more fulfilled. Now, if you want to take your relationships to the next level, what you want to start doing is think contribution instead of taking from the other person. So what you want to do is become a person of value. Okay, when you're a person of value, what happens is that you actually help and assist other people and you make the life of other people better. 
And again, this is a very, very important concept because being a person of value will improve your life in various ways. And we'll actually touch on this in future modules. And when you become a person of value, what will happen is your confidence and self-esteem will rise and you're benefiting the other person at the same time. So more mutual trust is created, more honesty and transparency is also created, and there are also a lot of long-term benefits as well. For example, each party will then begin to grow individually and together. On top of this, you'll have deeper levels of connect connection, trust, and love. And you'll be able to work together more harmoniously to achieve success in your own individual areas of life. So, when you're communicating with another person, there's actually an art to communicating well with others. And what I would suggest is you want to first start by helping the other person feel good. And I believe this is a skill. So what you would like to do, what I would suggest you should do, is take the time to listen to the other person first. Allow him or her to express themselves and how they feel. Compliment them when they've done something well. Empathize with them if they have a challenge. And show compassion if they need help or assistance. And just by doing this, you can seriously transform all your relationships. And the reason for this is because we are emotional beings first. And remember that 90% of our mind is subconscious, and that is the emotional mind. And another thing that I would want to suggest is that if we are not able to feel emotionally strong, if we're not able to feel, uh, in a, if we're not able to put ourselves in a positive state, it becomes very, very difficult to solve our challenges and our problems. This is why it's always important to fix our emotional state first. So how can we actually contribute to other people? The way I suggest we do this is, number one, we got to feel good about who we are first because we can actually make others feel good by feeling good about who we are. Another way to do this is to deal with the emotional part that is going on with the other person. So deal with the other person's emotions first. Okay. And many times when you deal with the other person's emotions first, you actually don't have much to do after that because the other person is now feeling heard and listened to and cared for, and then somehow they can almost solve their own problems that way. But if you need to actually deal with some logical issues, it's a good time to do this after you have dealt with the emotional part of the person. And another way to do this is actually to start thinking that the other person can actually solve their own problems. I know it's a little bit counterintuitive because as soon as somebody has a problem, we want to solve it. But the best way to handle this is to let them deal with the emotions first. Let's get the person to feel better first. And then somehow the logical problems become much easier to fix. So I was reading a book called Calling in the One by Catherine Woodward Thomas. And this was interesting because she writes about how we can actually find our perfect mate. And what I wanted to do was just share with you what women look for in relationships and what men look for in relationships. So based on Catherine's book, what she states is that women actually need to feel heard, noticed, wanted, and like they have their feelings considered before they do anything else. And they also want their partner to be able to stick to their words so that they can count on them. Men, on the other hand, aren't too much different, but for men, we thrive when we feel appreciated, when we feel admired, and when we feel respected. We really need to feel important and needed and also accepted the way we are. 
So I thought this might help if you have a spouse or if you have a partner and you want to actually make that relationship better. So we're going to give you an exercise right now and then I'm going to summarize. So the exercise is who could you have a better relationship with? So think about who you would love to have a better relationship with. And then what I'd like you to do is think how you can contribute better to the other person's life. And it may not be from a logical point of view. It may be through a subconscious level, which is dealing with their emotions first. Okay, so here is a summary for today. And basically we talked about how to develop new relationships. Then we talked about how we can actually improve our current relationships. And by looking at these two, we looked at the subconscious or the emotional part of our mind being a key indicator because 90% of our mind is emotional. So thank you very much and we'll see you in the next module.